Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco, and welcome to Bite Size Bible, where we take a small section of scripture and we break it open to see what does this mean about who God is and who I am and how I'm supposed to be living in this world. Today we're going to be studying Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, a very important text, one quoted by Jesus, and also one that has really important implications for who we are as individuals and as who we are as churches and how God wants to use us in this world, in this cultural moment. So I'm really excited to get into it with you today. So let me read to you Isaiah 61, picking up in verse one. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, verse 4. And they shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Now, really what we learn here is that Jesus' mission is a mission of restoration. Jesus' mission is restoration. Because this passage that we've read, you may not have realized it's from Isaiah 61, but Jesus quoted it. In Luke chapter 4, when he began his ministry, he was in the synagogue and he asked for the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He found Isaiah 61 and he read it. And he read it all the way up into the beginning of verse 2 where he said, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he shut the scroll. He handed it back to the attendant. He said, and this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And everybody was like freaked out when Jesus did it because Jesus is saying, I am the fulfillment of Isaiah 61 that the spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus and God has anointed Jesus to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He's like, hey, that is exactly what I have done. Now, what's beautiful about this idea of restoration is that as a church family at Crossroads Community Church, where I get the pleasure of being one of the pastors, We've called this year a year of restoration where God wants to do a work of restoring our souls and restoring our family and our church family and then ultimately restoring our community and our world. And we see in this passage exactly that, that Jesus is saying, I have come to do a work and I'm going to do an internal work that's going to go public ultimately. And we're excited to see how God wants to do that, not only in us at Crossroads, but in all the people of God because Jesus is committed to doing this work of restoration. Now, there's a question that's coming on up. If you're on your own, we want you to take some time, maybe grab a journal, a piece of paper, grab your phone and, 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 and just process through this question and pray about it. If you're in a group, we're gonna want you to talk about it. Go ahead. Jesus' mission is restoration. In what ways does the mission of Jesus inspire you to lead a different life? Now, what's important for us to realize here in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, is that the work that God wants to do, it first begins on the inside. Because by the time you get to the end of verse 2, it says, to comfort those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. See, when a person comes to Jesus, Jesus does a work of restoring their soul on the inside. And really what he does is he takes what's broken and he fixes it. He takes what is in disrepair and he restores it to a quality that's better than what it was before. And in a lot of ways, when God is doing that work, then we become fully engaged. And really what we want is we want to be fully engaged in a local church. God has invited us to gather together in local churches And we are the body of Christ. Now, all the churches together is the universal body of Christ, but each individual congregation 
is its own little body of Christ where God wants all of us to be engaged in it. At the Crossroads mission and vision is that because Jesus is real, we're a family of faith who's fully engaged. And God wants you to be fully engaged. And really, that is the outgrowth of when God is doing this soul work. Because once he restores our soul, then he can start to restore our families and our church family. And we have to make sure that we're letting God do the work inside of us first so that now God can use us as a vehicle to help others in this process of soul restoration. And we see it right here because Jesus comes to preach the good news, to to declare this freedom. And then right away, we start seeing the evidence of it in the hearts of people. Those who are mourning get comforted. Those who have a spirit of heaviness, who are are down, now they have the garment of praise. And ultimately, we get called trees of righteousness who've been planned by the Lord for his glory. We become fruitful trees. And it's really once God does that inner work and we're fully engaged and we become fruitful, that those fruitful trees can have their impact outside of it. Now, there's another question that's coming on up about this idea of being fully engaged as part of the soul restoration that God wants to do in our lives. And so if you're on your own, don't rush through the questions. It's an opportunity for God to take you deeper. And if you're in your group, I want you to discuss it. Go ahead. I'll be right back. What are some ways that Jesus is asking you to be more engaged? Why? Now, what I love so much is that Jesus comes, he does an internal work in us, and then he engages us with other people. And then ultimately, this work through a community, a fully engaged community in Jesus' name, they end up going public. Because look what it says in Isaiah 61, verse 4. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, and they shall and the desolations of many generations. See, once God does the work in a person's heart and then within a community of believers, then ultimately we go on out into the ruined cities. We rebuild the old ruins, things that have been broken down out in our communities, our world. Now we engage in it. And one of the things I like to remind people is that we should be inviting everyone to come and meet Jesus so that Jesus can do that work of soul restoration And then Jesus can then deploy us into the work of a local church family that is now out rebuilding what's been ruined, what's what's fallen apart now. God wants to use the people of God. And so our job as believers is to invite people to meet with Jesus so that they can go through the exact same process that we are going through. And if there's one thing we need right now is we need the people of God to be excited about who the Lord is and be inviting people to meet with him. So there's one last question that we're going to have Take it in your group. And if you're on your own, again, don't rush. Let God speak to you. Go ahead. Who will you connect with this week and invite to join the Crossroads family? How will you be praying for these people? And when will you reach out to them? I mean, I really love this passage, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, that Jesus quotes in Luke chapter 4, this work of restoration. I love to remind people, God doesn't just want to restore things to their former condition. He wants to restore it to a new and improved condition. And he's doing that in each one of us. And when he does it in us, and he does it in our church family, as we become fully engaged, then we move on into our world, restoring the things that have fallen apart. And that's where the gospel really runs forth. So let's be a part of that work that God is doing. Thanks for joining me, Daniel Fusco on Bite Size Bible. See you next time. God bless.